morning. Um, wow, there's a lot of people here. You know, it was even worse yesterday when I walked down and when my marketing manager booked this, he said it was going to be intimate. There was like 300 people jammed in. I was like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And then, of course, I keep walking up on the stage until they're not bright enough to realize that they're stairs. So. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Brad Moore, and I'm the CEO of Global Cannabis Applications Corp. We are a technology firm that's based in Vancouver, Canada, um, and we've been involved in the medical cannabis space for actually probably since 2017. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the story. The, the, the name of our talk is Beyond Seed to Sale. And really what we're going to be talking about is talking about the path towards cannabis efficacy. Now I can get in a lot of trouble when I start talking about those things because it means a lot of things to different people and the path of how you get there. But I think we can all agree upon one thing, we need to do a better job. If we're going to tell somebody what they should put in their body for a medical reason, we should be able to at least be able to tell them what it is and how that should work in their body, right? So I'm going to break this talk up into three parts. Um, it's going to be a little bit about a history. Um, there's a bit of a personal story for myself. Um, we're going to show you a short video. Um, now, I hope I don't get in trouble with the show because they said apparently we found out we're not supposed to talk anything about our product. So I think that every time if you hear a product name, you know, maybe I'll get somebody uh, in, the, in the audience to, yeah, exactly. Have a drink of beer or something, right? Like just pretend you didn't hear that so I don't get in trouble. And then at the end, what we're going to do is we just actually signed because we are a publicly traded company in Canada. We just signed a deal at 11 o'clock last night with our new partners of Amtri out of Northern California. So I'm going to have my partner, our new partner, Eric Kennedy, come up and join us on stage and tell them a little bit about what we're doing and how what we've got to all work together on one thing, which is called better, better uh, outcomes for medical cannabis patients. We got involved in this space. We like to say we're a technology company, but we're actually a data company. We used to say we're a blockchain company with a cannabis problem, but really what we are and what we're here to talk about is actually using data. We all know that there's a great path in going forward and recording information. A lot of times we have to use things like metrics. A lot of times we record those. As good cultivators, we're all dedicated to having a predictable, repeatable product. Uh, excuse me product and process, but there's a lot of variance. You can grow something, and if you have a distributor and he lowers the temperature uh, in the in the warehouse to actually like save money, that can affect the product. If you have a retailer who buys it and he buys a lot of product and he stores it, that will affect the product. So that net outcome for a person is actually quite can be quite different. When we originally looked at this in 2017, you know, I had investments in cannabis in Canada with a lot of the big names and I was doing well. The term medical seemed like it was used very loosely. Very, very, like, you know, I, the joke was because you have a, you know, a green neon red cross sign flashing, that actually doesn't mean it's medical, right? And so that was the nature of the gray market in Canada. And I think it's kind of similar in a lot of the states. Um, when we started to actually look at it, we figured out there's one primary product. We've got a plant. And a plant has variations, and a plant changes. And there's a lot of ethics. And, and you know, as you all know, we have one of the most complex plants in the whole world we're dealing with. And there's a lot of things can happen, and that can affect. I don't get into conversations too much about the entourage effect, because I know that's, that can be a bit of a slippery slope. But I think we can all agree on, we know what a lot of molecules we can do, we don't know what they all do, but we know what they all are. And we know that if we get good stabilization, at least we get some repeatability if we use good process. When we first came out, you know, we, I get to think, mistakenly thought we could work with the consumer to retail level. And I always think about when I was at an event in London, England, and all the big growers were in a room talking about yields and all this other stuff. And I hate to say it, like nine out of ten were all Canadian companies, right? Logging their stuff. Um, God bless them, but that's, that was the story. And then there was a lady, and she was a patient advocacy group and from Greece. And I don't know if you guys remember, but around 2018, there was a kid out of Ireland, his name was Billy, and he got a lot of press about his access to medical cannabis and how tough it was and how they were trying to do things for him. 
And you know, she came up to me, I was talking to her, she said, the advocacy lady said, I'm never coming to one of these things again. All those guys are over there talking about their own stuff and nobody's talking about the patient. And you know, my words to her were, if you don't, nobody will. So we've always been focused on this. 2000, moving ahead 2019, we actually filed a patent in the United States called Cannabis on the Blockchain. And it was about the concept of not seed to sale, but what we call seed to seed. It means like, what if we could do this? What if we could track the information all the way through, all the good stuff you guys as cultivators are doing, and all the product providers are doing. Put all that information there. And then what if we could get a consumer to actually attest their experience on a per gram basis, and put that onto the blockchain, and then feed all that information back to you on a per gram. So what you've got now is what we call one gram grown, one gram consumed. And then run, you know, an algorithm. So what I did is I went to where a whole bunch of smart people live, and they've got a really good medical cannabis, I went to Israel. And so I had an Israeli guy talk to me for four months, twice a day, explaining the idea of a blockchain. And I kept saying crypto, and he said, no, 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 no not like that. And he went over, and he went over, and he went over, and, he, and then finally the light bulb went on, and I was like, Holy crap, I get it. I actually get it, a working blockchain. And we parked down a path in 2020 when COVID hit, you know, we're all ready to jump out of the game and then like froze for all of us. And then so what we did was had an opportunity. Then I met a, a you know an Irish guy living in Switzerland. So you know, we get you know, we're very international, right? You know, I met an Irish guy from Switzerland and he turned around and he said and he was trying to he had a blockchain and he was seat to sale. And I said, but what if we talked about efficacy? What if we could do this? And this guy had been in this technology space for an extremely long period of time. And so in 2000 in uh, November, 20 November, we launched a product called Avixi. And it's what we call a seed to sales, a seed to seed solution. We track every aspect of growing by working with cultivation to simply give them something to put on the blockchain. And then a consumer, they, open up a wallet and they attest their experience. Now, something really interesting happened in 2000 and September 2018. These three numbers have a lot of personal significance for me. September 18, 2020, after routine, because I'm an old guy, after routine colonoscopy, I was diagnosed with a form of colon cancer. And all of a sudden I went from being the advocate to the patient. And what happened is over the next five, well, after that, because it's in Canada, everything takes you long to the system, I ended up getting 25 radiation treatments, five days a week for five weeks, all south of the border, 52 chemo treatments with IV and oral every day. Um, let's just put it, I wasn't walking like this. I was taking very short strides. Christmas Day, after being in and out of emergency for a variety of reasons, I was sick. I was really sick. I was really, really sick with radiation poison. I had a lot of things, bad things happening. And I went to the cancer clinic. You know, my CMO from Missouri goes, are you going to use cannabis? And I said, well, I'm going to ask. So I went to the cancer clinic. This is in Canada. Cannabis Canada. And I went and asked, you know what they said? The doctors there who, and I was patient out of this one clinic. I was patient number three or 2.4 million. They said to me, we don't know what to tell you, Brad. They said, can you go? Oh, okay. They said, they said, they turned around to me and they said, well, we can't tell you what the fraction will do. They can't tell you what morphine will do. They can't tell you what these five dreams. So if you've seen in my house, I had a whiteboard with time, the days, and six medications just to get through the day. Just to get through it. You know, and with a loving partner who really, who really saw things she shouldn't have to see as a human being helping me through this. And you know, the thing was, I was sick, and I knew, here's the thing, I knew what those opioids were gonna do to my system. You know, and I'm, I'm not a drinker, a drinker or a drugger. So I was putting shit in my body I hadn't had for 20 plus years. And I, you know what? But I gotta tell you something, as a patient, I was more willing to take a chance with that because I couldn't have found using a product that I didn't know what was gonna happen to me. And falling down on the ground 
and having a seizure or something else. I just couldn't do it. I didn't have the bandwidth to be that flexible. And so that number 60 that you just saw up there, that's the number of mill at the height of my, my where when I was in rough shape with the worms, that was the number of milligrams of morphine I had to take just to get through the day. Now the good news is nine months later after, 10 months later after treatment, it's all good so far, it's great, yay. Um, you know, uh, she's happy, my kids are happy. You know, it's funny, it just as an aside, you should, you should see when I had, uh, the joke was, when I had ass cancer, the stock price took off, apparently everybody thinks it's better if I'm sick, so we'll see about that. But it all rolled down to a lack of answers, and it really became about why I'm doing this thing. Right? I wanted to have an answer. I just wanted to have an answer I could feel safe and trusted. And I didn't want to, honestly, I didn't want to have a product sheet answer from somebody. And, and, and we've all seen it out of Canada. A lot of big cultivators get paid for the mislabeling thing. The COA says one thing, the label says something else. I didn't want that. I, I, just, I couldn't do it. And so, to that point, this became more from, it became a really kind of personal journey around it. So, what we want to do now is, you know, uh, we, we obviously we don't like trying to do live demos and show you things, but we're going to show you something. This is what we call a traditional seed to sale. Okay, it's about compliance, it's about regulatory, it's about the law. But we tried to figure out what if we wanted, what if we added another person, what if we added the Brad Moores? Because whether it's Brad Moore or it's a mom in the suburbs with kid with epilepsy, nobody wants to take a chance. The other side of that too, and it's not just about the 1% of the 1% of existing cannabis users, but it's about growing to 2% of 1%, 3%. This drug, can, this, this plant can do amazing things, but it can only do amazing things if we give the right, give answers. At this point, what we're gonna do, folks, we're gonna show you, we're gonna kind of go through a little bit of video. The reason we did the video this way is because it just does an overview. Once again, we're not here trying to say anything. We're showing you just like, we wanna show you what you can do by a testing information, okay? Um, and so at that point, we'll get started. When a cultivator downloads and licenses the Afixia app, the first step is to set up a business name and logo, identify your location, and upload a selfie so everyone can see who you are. Each step is notarized on the app and recorded on a blockchain. The selfie can be signed on your phone and authorized because each person in the organization is approved by Know Your Customer, KYC, Fraud Prevention. So that guy is my CMO. If that doesn't look like a canvas burr with those, those glasses and that beard, I don't know what it is. This is important. You know, one of, like I said, going back to my own story and the, and, the, and the advocacy of the lady from Greece, we just want people who are, when they're sick or they're not, you tell them to put something in your body, we just want to see it. Recently, we just did a thing on a, a show by Ted Dancer called Advancements. It went on CNBC. And the whole goal, the objective was that, was if you don't know what it is, don't put things into your body. Like, it's not fair. Like, don't, don't tell me you're going to help me. If you can't guarantee, it's going to do it time after time after time after time again. And so a big part of that is if you're a cultivator and you're doing the right things, we should know as a patient, I should know who you are. I should see your information, right? I mean, that's why you have an FDA health study. Why in Health Canada, there's a game for But you got to remember, there's no formula. You know, what, if, you know what the formula for good cannabis is? Proper growing conditions. Good genetics, consistency, applicable. And if you're doing that, you should be rewarded for that. Next, we define the mother plant by naming and identifying the cell, gene, and other relevant information. We assume most businesses use a cutting line, so authorization is completed by the cultivator as the mother plant. Authorization can also be performed for a seed. Photographs attest to when it was planted and every event that occurs. Okay, so I think one of the things that's really critical path around this, 
when we use, a lot of people have said, so we use an attestation process. So really what the technology, there's a whole bunch of stuff about Ethereum and all that, smart contracts. Look, that, it, it's kind of irrelevant. If anybody, I don't know how many people in here have an e-wallet for crypto or whatever, you know how like simple it was to set it up? That's actually what we say. And once again, I don't care if you use our stuff, but what I'm saying, if you should, you should have the ability to report information, put it up on the blockchain, because that QR code that you saw, that actually gives you the visibility. So when you store that information up, anybody anywhere with a simple smartphone can scan it and they can see it. They can see every they can see what your metrics are telling you. So if you're doing the right things, why not? You know what I mean? If you want, if you want me to use it for radiate, you know, for my stuff I have to use, why not tell me? Why not show me who you are? A simple QR code. Other planter seed is now before, and all actions are attested. It is time to define your growing zones. Typically, indoor cultivation involves large greenhouses with separate zones. Each zone would have between 140 and 500 plants at a time. The facility is mapped, similar to metric, allowing you to identify every stage in the growth cycle when it was planted, fertilized, harvested, etc. We define the batch. Every tray is identified and attested. Okay, so once again, to this point, keep adding information. Uh, I, one of the things, you know, like for example, in California, uh, as Eric will tell you, when cannabis comes in, it gets tested, gets in, and before it goes to the distributor, like, you know, when TSA brings in products from outside the United States, it gets held before it goes out. It's the same construct with the idea of that, okay? So really all you're doing is we're just hold, we're holding that information up and putting it back out. Um, so you want to get... Uh, now you harvest the flowers. The first step is to photograph the final product. Next, add drying ovens and timestamp when the flowers are put in the ovens. A fixie supports multiple labs inside the ecosystem. Simply identify the receiving lab, report the batch ID and number of grams shipped. A photo of the shipping label completes the process. When the lab results are complete, a photograph is uploaded to a blockchain. This photo is perhaps the most important event in the system. Now we have cannabis. It needs to go somewhere. A fixie effortly creates destinations from post-processing facilities and retail outlets to dispensaries and more. The important part is that a unique QR code is created for each shipment to be distributed from that batch. Okay, so to that point, guys, like I said, we truly believe, and I fundamentally believe this, that distribution and retail, any management, any process. So think about this, if you have a batch goes out, it's about 50,000 grams, right? Those grams are gonna go a lot of different places. Some might go straight through a distributor, some might get, like you can, I get drop ship right to a patient, or some might go to a manufacturer. What we're trying to do is the first QR code that you put on it, you can actually, then it starts to branch off. So every time something gets handled, it gets managed, it gets treated, we keep adding information to the blockchain. The whole goal is that, let's say for example, if you have like five grams, and they've all gone to five different places, but they started from the same batch over here, that these three up top here might have a really, people that use them have a really good experience. These two down here might have a really big problem. Then you find out, like I said, back in my example, they, I don't want to say they were mishandled or mismanaged, but they might not have been treated in an equitable way. And therefore, as a cultivator, or as anybody in the supply chain, you can look back, the system will tell you. They'll go, like, people are just saying, this is not working for them. So why? So that data coming back, it's very simple. That data coming back will actually show you that. When the package arrives at the destination, it is scanned, attesting to its receipt. The Fixie uses digital twin technology to prevent nefarious actors from cloning the key market. There is a lot of technology behind the digital twin QR code for compliance. The Fixie offers a better solution than existing products for these movements. From a compliance perspective, people using metrics say they want to use a Fixie alongside. It allows you to photograph lab results and upload metric PDF reports to complete the screen. The Fixie excels in the retail experience because we have real people attesting information to build a growth story. 
This allows consumers to scan the QR code on the package in the store using your smartphone and review the story. Then they can download the Fixie app and register exactly what happened. For example, what am I trying to treat? How many milligrams did I take? Did it help? Consumers earn values because it is a blockchain and they can offer a reward. The next person looking to use this product can see the experiences of other people. This is what we call one gram home, one gram consumer. That means for every gram, there is a complete story from cultivation to consumption. When layering tens of thousands of experiences, we achieve an average efficacy rating for treating a specific symptom with a specific product. This information is fed back to retailers, manufacturers, medical professionals, doctors, and cultivators. Okay, so essentially in summary, what we've done and what we've basically created, everything is self-contained. All you need to use this, here's the best part, you need a smartphone, right? We know you're not a criminal when we KYC you, you don't have a license because you're not a criminal, so that's good. So you need a smartphone and you need a QR code printer. And here's even the best thing. If you do these steps, right, if you do these steps, we don't, the way it works, see that QR code? We actually don't, we only make money when you print your QR code. So if you're a cultivator, you grow one whole batch and you got one code and it's got all that stuff on it, that literally costs you $75. That's the start of the journey to rewarding customer service. In Israel, the, the cultivators are using it. The government of Israel is actually the regulator or is allowed them to do all their compliance reporting. I don't think that maybe that'll happen here. Maybe it won't depend on the state. But the one thing that's happening is that the information coming back from that consumer experience, from that person, the Brad Wars of the world, you know, they said I could swear once with ass cancer, get to turn around and they get to say, you know what, I, I, I can do this. I, I can get in behind this. I can take that chance. And that's really what this is about. It's about increasing repeatable sales. That's what we're, we want to use technology to help you guys sell more. We want to use technology where you don't get ground down on a cost per pound. You know, we want to use technology where people are walking in saying, I want that cannabis with the QR code. I want that one because I know it's repeatable. I know what I use, it's going to happen again. I know the variants won't be all over. So if you take anything out of this, uh, around the technology, is that there are solutions that are out there. They're simple. They're not hard to get engaged with. You know, I think yesterday up here there were some great talks about tech and cannabis. This can be, we believe, the ability to like get that, you deserve those reports that you saw. As a cultivator, we believe you deserve those reports back to you. To actually make yourself a better business, a better cultivator. Nobody's asking, and I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, nobody's asking as terpenes and all this kind of stuff. We're just asking to make sure that somebody doesn't put too much humidity in the grow, they don't lower the lights when they shouldn't, they don't increase the water temperature, that they have some control. And we think if you're doing that, you should be rewarded for that. So, to that point, what I want to do now is I want to take a few minutes. Yesterday we signed a very significant partnership deal with our friends from Amtri Agency out of Northern California representing a multitude up to hopefully a potential 20,000 cultivators out of the Anglo Triangle area. Uh, my good, uh, our new partner, my good friend, Eric Kennedy, come on up. Big chip. All right. Hey, Ray, thank you so much. Let me give you a hug. I love my partners there. Before I start, I want to thank GCAC, I want to thank the, the uh, Fixy team that's here, all from Ireland, from Israel, I mean, from a global company here. But I'm here, my name is Eric Kennedy, here to represent a crew. Our crew is out of the Emerald Triangle, group of farmers. Everybody know about the Emerald Triangle? Come on, you gotta give it up for the 420. Come on, they started today. The they the OGs. So before I start, I got one question. How many people actually smoke cannabis? Put your hands up there. Anybody smoke cannabis? How many people enjoy smoking cannabis? How many people grow cannabis? So the reason I ask that is because right now we're dealing with an epidemic where most people don't actually know what you're smoking. Let's just keep it real. You get an OG, you got some fire. You got some packs, you got some smoke. I mean, we got all kinds of ways that we describe what we smoke. But at the end of the day, I don't think we're really getting what we should deserve in our bodies. We don't really know what we smoke, right? So 
I would say this. Do you know what you're smoking? We do. Why? Because we partner with a technology company that we now can get all the data, be able to put it to the end users, so that you know that our systems, our problems, what we're doing in the system is true, real, and you can get what you pay for. Right now, the game is just keep it real. Fuck that. You know, and we'll use some real harsh words to get your attention. Let's put it this way. People are buying cannabis, and they're going home, they're smoking, and they find out that, wait, I don't taste anything. There's no THC in here. I'm not getting the munchies. I'm actually angry. So you go back and say, wait a minute, oh man, testing this is actually Delta, eh? Ooh. Oh my gosh, it's spray. There's some stuff on it. Ouch. I got headaches. So what we did is I went to my good friends up in the Emerald Triangle that I represent, which is a great place. They have French cannabis, great sun grown cannabis, and a lot of it doesn't get down to the battlegrounds of Southern California, but historically 80% of it reaches the world out of the United States, correct? So what we do is we go through four creeds and I'm gonna get through this quick. Our four creeds is first we got unifiers. Alright? Couple of cultivators, farmers up in the Emerald Triangle, starting with five. My partner Scott Zorn is not here, he's actually harvesting. We brought together the top cultivators in the Emerald Triangle and got unified. We had an open dialogue about what is wrong with the system. Why is it not working for you? Why are you being regulated? Why are you being wiped out? Cool. We got all that down and we all had a hug. We said, you know what, let's work together so that we can find a solution by you being open about your practices, what your recipes are. What's your information? They said, well, Eric, how are we going to do this? I said, I think we should create a blockchain. Because <laughs> it's an open ledger. You put all your information, they said, well, shit, who's going to do that? I'm like, I'm going to find somebody. So we got on our knees, and we prayed, and all of a sudden, we got a call, and there was a branch. Ran on the phone. He <laughs> told us about this program and he fixed it. And I said, dude, if this is not a perfect marriage, I don't know what we can do. He said, well, Eric, what I need is some grams in my system. I said, you need grams. Man, we're gonna give you kilos. I said, let me get on the phone with my partners and let's see what we can do. So what we did from there is we got decentralized. That's our next clue. We had to find a way to get the new market share. We had to find where we could take you out the analog and get you into the digital market share. So we found out by learning blockchain, being open, finding the technology, thinking out of the box, not thinking about the money, not thinking about the regulation, thinking about freedom, health, giving back. How do we help you? So we decentralize our thing. We band together and realize that we are growing commodities. We have something that's an actual trade. And we can't even trade it and treat it and be able to come back and build a wealth of you without saying, please, or let me in the door, or do I have enough money? So we got decentralized our thing. We turned our backs on the regulators and we came together and said, let's put the information in the blockchain. Let's share everything you're doing. Everything, put it in the system. What, you don't have anything to hide? You have to wait to a COA to prove yourself? Well, I know a distributor that'll change that real quick and take your weed and take your money. But when you have something that can back you up, when you can scan your codes and everybody can see the open measure, it's true. So what we did from there is we want to go to standardize. We want to be standard. We want to know that our practices can be reduplicated so that you can know exactly what you should be smoking, what you should be putting in your body. And the only way we can do that is to do it again the same way. Do it again the same way. And if I move my plant to the left because of the sun, I should know it and put it in the blockchain. And that's the three creeds so that the fourth one is so you and you and me can maximize on the opportunity. You say, well, what do you mean? I get it, we collect the data, we get this, this, and this. So what we did we worked with the Fixie team, the GCA, to be able to give cultivators a new energy to be able to stake interest in your own cultivation. So what I mean by this is, if you went to the system, let's say an average of five million grams, we're able to now leverage and stake that by you putting it in the warehouse, going through your checks and balances, the ECOAs, and allowing your assets to be monetize in the digital format. Being able to stand on your ground, and we do that in a token. The first ever token is going to be launched by the Fixie system called the M-Tri token. And the M-Tri token is basically like a utility token. It's a keepsake. It's something for you to hold that backs 
your ability to say that my cannabis is clean, is ready for consumption, and is going through a licensed distribution center. In real time, we edit that in the digital format as an avatar. Meaning, this coin now is worth $2 because the data says it is. It's not backed by any fiat, it's backed by the cultivators and their product. Sitting on the side saying, my value is holding, it's rated, registered in the, in the system, and I can back that it's going to sell. So once it enters into a distribution model, we're allowed to now be able to pay you dividends off of your performance, off of your technology, and off your truth. And then from there, the end user. Remember, it's all about the end user, because I'm an end user, you're an end user. Once you click that code, you give us data back, you get rewarded with a token. You get rewarded with coins. And those coins become redeemable, tradable. They hold a value at a, at a later time. So we want you to hold the value, be able to build our own currency, exchange it, and to be able to control our own destiny and freedom and be decentralized, unified, decentralized, standardized, so that we can maximize. So the last question I ask you again, do you know what you're smoking? We do. And that's what the m is going to bring to the market, along with our partners at Fixie and GCH. I hope that you definitely download the cards, get in touch with us, set up a meeting, and let's go. Let's be able to go out and build our own technology footprints with candidates at the back of it. That's pretty much my own statement. Let's do it as a team. Let's get unified. All right, here we go. Take a selfie. Come on, Brad. Let's do it.